Hey, welcome back to the Uncommon Truth Podcast. We are here together once again with the band Steve and Vicky Orsillo. <laughs> laughing already. <laughs> uh, but that, is it good to have dead silent uh, airtime? Is that always in, in, on the radio? Is that a good thing? I think Vicky wanted to say cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing what Luke was going to do. Yeah. He, was, <laughs> he was floundering, wasn't he? <laughs> With Vicky and Steve or Solo. I was waiting for some sort of response, but that's okay. You can leave me hanging. I'll, I'll fill in the silence. Praise the Lord. We're here. Yeah. We're glad to be here. Um, yep. We are going to keep going with Romans 12. We started last week. Yes. And we'll dive I think into that'd that be a great bit. idea. But before we do that, you guys were singing some interesting songs. Oh, earlier. yeah. James Croce. Uh, Steve was singing Bald Headed Alina. No, that, and you isn't, got... that isn't James Croce. <laughs> You want to bet? Positively. Who is it? There is no such person as James Croce. Jim Croce. You don't Thank think his you. mother's name was J- named him James? called him James when she was mad at him, probably. Oh, my gosh. Literal Larry. But that was not Jim Croce. He, I, I think his uh, birth wasn't name James was James, James or Jim Croce. Croce. It wasn't Croce. It was uh, John Sebastian from Love and Spoonful. Let's okay. Look look, well, can you look up uh, our fact checker? Fact checker. We don't need a fact checker. We this have is, Yost This from is my bailiwig, the Love and Spoonful from the 60s. It's Jim Croce. John Sebastian. Bald-headed Lena, has anybody seen her? Yeah, that's his song. Steve is correct. I, I, also, Jim there Croce There never was it. any doubt. You didn't have to look it up. <laughs> Jim Croce also sang it? Well, it is the love experience. Yeah. yeah. See? You're saying C, he's agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> he may prove me right. You're saying C. See what I put up with, people? What other people. song? What other people, song? People, what people, people. What other you song see you what love? I have to put okay, up What with? other songs did Love and Spoonful sing? Um, I know them, too. Lots of them. It's a, the... Uh, you got me... Theme song for Welcome Back, Cotter. Welcome Back. No, no not that song. Yeah, that's it. Welcome back. <laughs> you're so the dreams were your ticket out. Your dreams were your ticket out, yeah. So why can don't we, we have just a move? Out of here let's right move. Now? Let, can let's, we move let's, on? let's move on before we send into more chaos. Yes. 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 Uh, see what oh, I have to deal with, people? He makes me crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh. She says, see? <laughs> <laughs> Proves me right, and she says, see? Okay. So last time we talked about uh, Romans 12, we, we talked about the background of it from Romans 11 being. Jesus saying to the uh, Gentiles, look, he, he didn't spare his chosen people, so you better be careful, right? And we started with verse 1 where it says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice. We went from there and talked about all of that, and that was really good. So today I just want to keep going. I'm going to jump to verse 9 where he says, oh, Vicky's pointing something out. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> the bad is called James. His name is James. Okay. <laughs> it says, what she I was right you, one you time, know, three you times. You know what she pointed at? She pointed at Jim Croce. It says, it says James. It says James. And see, Jim it Croce. says James. <laughs> I told you. Well, every guy on earth named Jim is. But you argued with that. James. No, I didn't. Hear. I said when his mother was mad at him, she called him James, but he's not known that way. I so. can't believe Love and Spoonful saying that, though. Well. So let's, uh, we're not going to be able to study the Bible because Vicky has to admit she was wrong. And she just I have can't. no idea what we're she talking about. She cannot admit that she was wrong. Let Steve go like, uh. oh, odd. Well, Steve is going to go first. <laughs> How weird. Uh. All right. Unique. Let's go. Okay. So oh, yeah. Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Oh, there you go. Abhor yeah. what is evil. <laughs> Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Persevering in tribulation. Devoted to prayer. Contributing to the needs of the saints. And practicing hospitality. Yeah, Steve needs to go first on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It yep. continues. He yeah, could have went right. on for quite a few more done. verses, yeah. but you know, do not. I mean, it's all kinds of stuff. It's a whole list of description of Christian way of life, mm-hmm. Christian living, Christian personality, Christian countenance, uh, the way we treat each other. It's all about it could, this whole s- section after the first uh, five words mm-hmm. can be called love, mm-hmm. loving your neighbor. As Jesus has loved you, Jesus loves us uh, by clinging to what is good and devoted to one another. Us, He's 
shares his brotherly love with us. He prefers us in honor. He doesn't let lag behind in being due diligent towards us. He's fervent in spirit towards us. He rejoices in hope, persevering in tribulation towards us. You know, like you just read it, man. He was being beaten. And he says, behold, I'm making all things brand new. Right in the middle of his torture, right? You know, mm. he's been beaten all night. They bring him out in the morning. They they flogged him. And he says, see, I'm making all things new. I mean, it, it was crazy. Uh, he, he is the epitome of these things. But let's just start at the very first five words. Let love uh, be without hypocrisy. Let's just yeah. do that. And what that means, what that word hypocrisy means in the Greek, it means very specifically an actor. So let's replace hypocrisy with acting. That's good. And what hypocrisy means in the Greek is acting. And so if we read it again, just changing the word from hypocrisy, which we've kind of butchered that word, but the word acting really explains it so much better. Let love be without acting. Don't be playing a role oh, when you're goodness. loving. Be real. Let it be who you are. Mm. You are love, and you are the representation of God's love on the earth. You are the epistles that people read. So we try to get people to read the Bible, and then we try to get people to understand the Bible. Then we try to get into the heads of the writers of the Bible to see what did they really mean when they wrote it and all that. And what were they really saying, and who are they talking to, and how should it be taken? And, and honestly, that's some of the problem with Bible interpretation is people don't Interpret. look at the contextual mm -hmm. reason for writing it or what he's actually trying to say to prove his point, what points he's trying to make. And so in, in this case, all of that goes away when we understand that we are the epistles written on our hearts for all men to read. And so we don't need them to get to read the Bible. We need them to get to read us and see the reality of That's good. we're not acting our love out. We love God with everything. That, that that covers our persevering in tribulation. That covers the blessing those who persecute you, rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. It's empathy. Mm -hmm. All of this is covered by the fact that we are the epistles. We are the representation of Christ on the earth, the vicar, the the replacement. We're, we're who he, they can't see him any longer. He's not here. So they see us. Mm -hmm. Do love without hypocrisy. Love without acting. Be real. Be the character you claim to be. Mm -hmm. Be what you say you are. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. And so being devoted to one another, that is just simply, easily, exactly what Jesus is to us. Mm -hmm. And that's all that list is, is quit acting and be what Jesus is to the world. Show them who he is. Be the, the message. Be, be God's word to the world. Be, when it says God is love, be God's love to the world. God is spirit. See things from a spiritual advantage or sp uh, vantage point is what I meant to say. See it from a spiritual platform and, and, and present it. God loves you. What you can't see about God, you can see his love in action. You can look around you, and even though you can't see him, he says he's love. You can see love everywhere. You can see it everywhere if you look at it. Today we, 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 we think hate is cool, or we think anger is cool, or putting people down is cool, or dividing is cool. So that's what they're focusing on today. But Christianity can't be part of that. It has to, this, this, these verses in Romans 12, you know, uh, you know, they're urging us on to excellence yeah, and, and not acting. And I'm trying to remember what you just said it too. So, you know, this, evil. this sacrifice, this mm -hmm. sacrifice, life of sacrifice, a whole, your life be a holy sacrifice for who? Jesus doesn't need your sacrifice. It's the people that don't know Jesus that need your sacrifice. And it's the people who can't see Jesus that need to be able to see him when they look at you. Wow. It's the people that can't hear him that need to hear him when you speak. They can't know him, but they can know of him by watching you. So good. And maybe become hungry, like, can I know him too? Yes, absolutely you can know him too. Let me show you the way. And Paul says it. Let me show you a still more excellent way. You know, he's he's really he's really a great wordsmith, and he's very educated, and he does this very well. And what he's saying here is, how do you live as a Christian, 
to be the Christ in the world? Mm. How do you become the Christ? If you're going to be called a Christian, you're being called the little Christ, the small version of Christ. But if even if, in my opinion, if I only saw a little bit of Jesus in my life, I wouldn't have went through so much hell. Huh. I would not have ended up so crappy and hateful and angry and disappointed and robbed. I wouldn't have felt like I deserved something. So good. If I could have just seen a little of him, you know? Mm. And if we would just be a little bit of Jesus, we would be able to be fervent in spirit. We would we would serve the Lord with fervency and we would rejoice in hope, persevere in tribulation, devote ourselves to prayer, contribute to the needs of saints, and we would practice hospitality. Because that's what he does. That's who he is. And that's what this is saying. Let love be without acting. Make it real. Wow. My favorite thing anyone ever says of me, and they say it about me and Vicky all the time, they just, you guys, and, and I have to admit, it, they say it more when she's with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, because they see it better when she's with me. But, you know, you guys are so real. Mm. I get it from the sermons. You know, people come up after the sermons and say, wow, you're just so real. You're just talking to us. You're just sharing with us. You're just telling, you know, and it, it's so it's so un, uh, unconstructed. It's not it's not put together to try to impress. It's just you're just telling us from your heart and being real. And that's what I want. It, it, anything else is hypocrisy. It's an it's a it's putting on a front. It's the mask we always talk about. Take off the mask, get real, and be real, and don't be an actor. Mm. But the and, thing is, though, that I want to go to piggyback off what he said is that, well, yeah, he he looks real from from the altar, and a lot of people look real from the altar or at church. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, what I prefer even more is that they see us on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, and then they say you're real, that you're the same as you were at church, and I appreciate that because that's you know I think I don't think he finished the whole the whole idea is that you know that sometimes where we are acting is mm -hmm. at church for the for the masses we just want you know we put our nice clothes we clean our kids up we had them sit exactly right and we just we have them perform on monday uh, sunday and then and it comes a lot and the rest of the week and there's intentional sin everywhere and i think that's the difference is that you know what paul, what paul is saying here is that don't intentionally sin G abhor evil get away from evil you know it's it's so clear if you just live this romans 9 um 12 whatever it was 12 mm -hmm. through I, I i couldn't find my bible that but um <laughs> 9, 12 through whatever you said um it, it, be authentic yeah. be real you know be the same person when you are on, on sunday as you are on friday night saturday night it's not miller time it's jesus time <laughs> you know i mean you, you know yeah. we don't need the artificial flavorings to make jesus palatable hmm. we don't need the artificial things this the sex drugs and rock and roll to make jesus even better it, to me that does so much damage because People in the world know what Christians should be, and they shouldn't smoke, drink, um, they shouldn't uh, have sex, and they shouldn't swear, and they should go to church all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the definition of what they think we should be. So I think we should be that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Paul is saying is, is, you know, stop acting. You know, don't call yourself a Christian if you're just – you're just not reading. You don't know what he says and how to live. If you read Jesus in chronological, sequential order, if you read the Gospels and you really read them, we were just having a conversation with uh, one of our pastors before we started. It's it says a lot. Jesus says a lot. A lot. He said he is not a shrinking violet. <laughs> he says some things that should actually cause you to fall on your knees and repent. Yeah. It, you know, I just was at a store today, and I was telling the guys, you know, before you came in, is that this girl said she came to our church one time, and I said, well, why aren't you there? And she said, Cause someone hurt her, my feelings. It's like, oh, I'm oh. sorry, you know. And, and then I had to tell, hear the story. Well, it's like, well, I'm sorry that they hurt your feelings. However, that's what Jesus says. So what do you want? They told you the truth. He, they yeah. told you the truth. Yeah. So, and it's like, but most people don't know the truth because they're not reading mm. to study to show mm. themselves approved. They're not reading to, the, you know, how do you say it? You often read to back up what you believe. You I, Most people read the Bible to find things that, that, that satisfy their life. That, like, this proves me right. 
they read the Bible to prove their own opinion right. Correct. Instead of reading the Bible to find for out the who Bible he is. to tell you how to live. Mm. How to live. Right. So people, the, the Bible tells you how to live. I, you just If you would just take a challenge of just reading the Gospels four times in a row without anything else, don't stop, just read it. It's like the things Jesus says are are just knee buckling. They're 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 a lot. Mm. And it's hard it is hard to be a Christian because the world system's so so strong. And Paul's saying, get away from the world system in, in a nutshell. Just don't do it. Right? Right. Yeah. Be different. This this chapter twelve. Nine. If if twelve chapter twelve. If oh, 12. this was the only chapter I'm wrong all day today. If this was the only chapter you had, like you just got lost on a desert island and some reason there was a burnt up Bible there, and the only page you got was Romans 12. And, oh my goodness. And you, this thing goes on for quite a while, yeah. it's telling you not to do evil. I mean, you would have plenty of work to oh do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's true. I mean, we have not in our lifetime Scratch. mastered uh -huh. chapter 12 of Romans. No. And I don't know very many people. Every once in a while, we talk to someone that's full of grace, you know, that just they're the sweetest, full yeah. of grace people that pray they're prayer warriors and every once in a while you think man someone who's done chapter 12 mm -hmm. they've really they've really they really become you know the reality of chapter 12 and i think that this is such a stands on its own such a fabulous list of what would be the litmus test of you know are we getting it yeah well read these things make a list <laughs> are you getting them yeah. you know like each one, bless those who persecute you. Yeah, I was going to go. I got to tell you, man. I would, yeah, I think I would have yeah. hit him with a bat when I started. And yeah. today, I may not bless them, but I don't curse them. Mm -hmm. I've come far, pilgrim. And uh, and each one of them, you know, devoted to prayer. Mm -hmm. I am devoted to trusting God in prayer. And it's so much different. Fervent in spirit. I'm so much more fervent in spirit. No matter how old I get, I meet older Christians who've lost their fervency. Mm -hmm. I, I'm opposite. My fervency just continues to increase day in, day out. So I read this and I go, yeah, you know, I'm doing good on some of, some of this stuff. Devoted to others. You know, I'm devoted. My whole life lived for others. I'm devoted. I, I'm, I'm doing well. But boy, you just keep you keep you know reading this thing, and you you're gonna come upon five, six, seven things that, oh man, I feel like I'm at the start line. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a failure on those things, yeah. you know. And it's, I think Paul was, more than anything, Paul really got what a Holy Spirit living in me ought to for look sure. like when practiced for real and not acted upon. Yeah. Like being an actor. You know, it's not a role I'm playing to be pastor of the Father's House Church. It's who he made me to be. Mm -hmm. And it's my identity. Oh, that's good. That's really is good. Is pastor, the calling of pastor. You don't so, put it on a Sunday morning? No, I don't put it on a Sunday morning. In fact, probably the, the thing I, the least important thing I do in a week is what we do on it's Sunday really morning. Good. You know? mm -hmm. um, most everything else is more that's important. That's for everybody, right? Yeah. The most that's just a this is just a small yeah. portion. Of what and I'm do. not and I'm not saying it's not important. We no, aren't no. saying that, right? Go to church. Yeah. There's um I, I was just thinking as you're sharing there's you know we people will often read uh, the list in Galatians, right? The fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, mm -hmm. etc. And you know, I was thinking how much this list is really those things walked out in practice. Oh, it's good. They are just yeah. those things. Yeah. He, yeah, it's good. He, you know, it's almost like. Uh, this is the expanded version. This yeah. is the amplified version of, <laughs> of the the fruit of the That's spirit good. list. Or those who walk by the spirit do yeah. this, and those who walk by the flesh do that. Yeah. This is like both lists, uh, the uh, you know the plus and minus. Mm -hmm. Like this is the this is the list that makes it what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. Yeah. Whereas you know the other one is just if you're doing this, mm -hmm. it's wrong. You're doing that, it's right. This one's like. Mm -hmm. This like oh, am I doing that one right? No, not very good, not yeah. very well. So I just want to pull a couple of them out and just talk about. Um, let's go back to verse fourteen, which was "Bless those who persecute you, oh, bless man. and do not curse." Can we <laughs> share a little bit of insight and wisdom on? I think for me, you know, um, it's very difficult um, when pe when, pe when people. I think the worst thing is when people. For me, when people you love betray you, mm. um, to continue to bless and not curse, and um, 
you know, I think there's like it's always on my mind, kind of, and I don't always know how to get rid of it. You know, I you know I pray through it and forgive them stuff, but um, and then just people who don't, they just hate you for no apparent reason. They don't mm. even know you. But the truth is, they did that to Jesus, and it, and if they hate you because you're you're doing these things, I think you should be okay with that. However, we're, we're people pleasers, and it's very difficult. But blessing those who curse you, oh, persecute you, and curse you. Oh my gosh, we've had a lot. We've had a little bit of a, um, what's it called? When we we had a little bit of examples of that. No, we've had many. When you're a pastor, it's you know you talk to any other pastors. It's just it's just the way it is, mm. you know. Mm. And um, you invite everybody in. Yeah, you should be. And so the in. wolves come in with the sheep, right? That's and the good. Weeds grow with the wheat, mm. really according good. to Jesus. And I just got to tell you, you know, if you if you're doing it right, <sighs> you're going to have slander. Mm. If you're doing it right, you're going to be attacked. Yeah. Even if you're loving, you could love 100 people and do it perfectly. Now, I've never done it perfectly, but you could do it perfectly. And in that 100, you're still going to have slanderers and backbiters mm-hmm. and wolves and, and biting dogs. And you're just going to have every <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of uh, bad responses. So you just have to know that if you put your hand out there to do something, some people are going to smack it and some people are going <laughs> to shake it. Right. And it's just really hard. You turn your back on a whole group of people because you trust them. They're, the testing of their trust is going to be, some of them are going to fail. Mm. And it, uh, it's, it's heartbreaking. I mean, I, I still ache and agonize over people that I said I love and I, I mm-hmm. meant it. You know, I'm not faking. I'm not acting. I love. Because that's the first word. Let love be without acting. Mm. Let love without, be, with, be without performance. Let it be without faking. And... Uh, I loved them, and they hate me. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, what did I ever do to you? There's nothing. You can't. They don't have anything. And so it's like, where did this come from? And, and I know that jealousy and envy are the number one place that hate comes mm-hmm. from. It's mostly envy. I want what you have. I'm jealous that you got the anointing of God and I mm-hmm. didn't. I'm jealous that you got a happy marriage and mine all failed. I'm jealous that you have a nice truck and I drive a jalopy. And a lot of times hate will come out of those, and that's called envy. I want what you have. I want yours. You know, that's envy. Uh, I'm, you know, jealous of you means I just, wow, you got it and I didn't. Mm -hmm. But it falls short of I want yours. I'm going to take yours. Maybe if I kill you, God will give it to me Mm -hmm. or something, you know, kind of really crazy stuff. I can gain favor by getting rid of Mm -hmm. the person who has favor. And those are... You know, that's, that spirit, that antichrist spirit is alive and well on planet Earth. And, and so, therefore, if you invite the world into your church, then it's alive and well in your church. And the thing and, is, the thing is, is that I think just the way that the Lord, we read, read the Gospels and we read the, we read the whole Bible. So we asked me, do you really know the Old Testament? Of course we do. But we, 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 we read the, how to live in the New Testament mm-hmm. because of Christ, because we're Christians. But even if you just follow the precepts of Jesus and try to get away from the line and, and, and in our minds make compromises like the world, be like the world, people will be mad at you. People will be, so you don't have to do all that. Mm-hmm. You don't have to give your life away. You're doing too much. You're, you don't have to not drink. You don't have to not do this. You can, you, you know, you can do this, you can do that. And it's like, okay, that's not what I read. And that's, mm-hmm. to me, it's like, I want to be what the, everybody in the world wants me to be. I mean, I just want to be all things, all people. For like, you know, like, was that Paul that said that? All things, all people. Yep. And it's so the church sometimes, especially now in the last 20 years, we've been Christians over, oh, Steve's almost 50 years, and it wasn't like that when mm-hmm. we started, but it's just kind of gotten corrupted by the world, in my opinion. And so the yeah. church is becoming more like the world instead mm-hmm. of the world becoming more like the church. And the church, if they're starting to do compromise, they just they get mad at you. Yeah, it's really good. How about this one? Uh, do not be wise in your own estimation. Which is that? So in verse 16. I'll read the whole thing. No, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Beware of the same mind. Be of the yeah. same mind. Yeah. But associate with the lowly. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lo- lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back yeah. evil for evil for anyone. But that, do not be wise in your own estimation or haughty in mind. Pri- you know, pride and, and is something, I think. I think that, that you know, oh, today, today to try to keep this wise thinking, the wise interpretation yeah. of Scripture, 
to try to keep it from happening, the world system invading the church and all that, it, you would read that and think it's wrong to say, to acknowledge the God's wisdom coming through you. Hmm. And that's not what it means. It's surrounded by verses of thinking you're better than people right. because God has chosen you. Mm -hmm. Thinking you're uh, better than people because you see the truth. Wow. Like two people there and one knows the truth and one doesn't. It's like, yes, I was chosen by God and you weren't Relax. chosen. <laughs> and it's, don't be haughty of spirit. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Don't decide for yourself that you are a cut above or yeah, superior no. or... You're the wizard, you know. <laughs> you're the you're the master of ceremonies, and 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 I think it's easy to do if you forget what Jesus said. Which one of you wants to be great in the kingdom of heaven? The servant of all, the, he will be the great. The one who serves will be the one who's great. The first shall be last. And I think that if you take on the no greater love verse of laying down your life and the one who serves is the one who's great in the kingdom mm -hmm. and you really adopt those it's really hard to become haughty yeah it really is it's Plus what he did for you it is so much easier to look at the crowd and say why me lord <laughs> yeah why did you choose me there seems to have been way smarter men mm -hmm. way better men way way you know faster stronger taller better looking you know they're men who knew how to speak better you know why me, Lord? Why did you choose? There tends to be this humility of, I just, I just wonder why me, but also this excitement when you understand the servant of all mentality of Christian leadership, that your life is to serve others, not yourself. Um, that you deserve nothing, you're owed nothing, you mm -hmm. owe everything, that you, he lets you work for him. It's a privilege. Here you are in a privileged relationship. Wow. It's pretty hard to become haughty. Well, it's it, a pretty hard to look at others and look down on them. I think, and think I you're th better. I think though the message of Jesus, if you read it like factually and you don't dismiss any of the scriptures, and like I said at the beginning, top of the hour, that you you read it chronologically, people will think you're haughty, mm -hmm. that you're a know-it-all, that because you're like because when we started reading them in in con sequential order, it's like the clouds cleared up for me in mm -hmm. confusion. And now people say things, and I'm like, well, that's not it. Let's go see if that's what Jesus really said. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's you will. People will consider you, consider you arrogant or haughty, or because it's like because you know definitively His words will judge us. So we go study His words, and we don't just take out a scripture here and a scripture there and a scripture there to back what we we believe. We try to read them like in order. Mm. And so people do give us a moniker of being arrogant or know it. Oh, you think you know everything? I mean, in our in our pastoring, we've had that a lot. And it's like I don't think that's that's not true. We're just trying to tell you what you like. The girl I said today, somebody hurt her feelings. Well, that's. Would you rather go to hell with your feelings hurt, or would you rather have your feelings hurt and go to heaven? Mm -hmm. It's like what's what's our responsibility to to know the words of Jesus, to know the words of the epistles, to 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 know who the, what the Old Testament says about God and how He changes not, but the, but live the New Testament with Jesus. So when you do this, you do run into the people are going to say that they yeah. have said it about us over and over again, right? right? Right. Arrogance, or yeah. you know, but it's like no. What, what what in the quiet when we're Stephen and her alone, we can't believe that we were chosen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's a we can't believe that this truth has been re revealed. You know, his, his seeing his, the face of Jesus, he is a truth, mm -hmm. and it's like I don't understand why. It's I'm so honored. Why it's why me? I look around the malls. Why not them? Mm -hmm. You know. So I'm I'm honored and privileged, yeah. and I don't do not take that responsibility or role callously that's good okay you can tell me i can take it how did i hurt her feelings <laughs> <laughs> no it wasn't just, you just kidding it wasn't you <laughs> it was luke it was uh, it was yos you know well, as you guys are talking i was just thinking about one thing that maybe as a side note but i, I know it's just it's where i feel the spirit going but many of us in church today are trying to you know um, get out of church essentially want to be Christian you know be Without, church of one mm -hmm, yeah. right but it's I was thinking how impossible it is to do this, this <laughs> by yourself as a church of one yeah be a lot easier um, it actually yeah, be much yeah. easier except for the brotherly <laughs> way you could love I yourself think, I don't think it's possible at all no. right. <laughs> I'm just being 
I'm kidding. No, you can't succeed if you're not tested. Yeah. Oh. It's the testing of your faith, faith that produces, produces endurance, which mm-hmm. causes everything to become perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just the the need of the body of Christ. Too. Right. Yeah, you yeah. got to find a church and go. Yeah. You can't be a church of one. It's so important. You know, we we've been we've been pastors and we've been church go. You know, just going to church and being part of a body, and we've been on both sides. So now we both we get both sides, and it's it's so important to find some place mm-hmm. and and serve the vision and get involved and get involved. Yeah. Even if you've, you know, if you have been hurt or offended, mm-hmm. if you have been let have down, been if you have, you know, if you've been in a place where these things weren't done yeah. or the things that he says not to do were done, it's like you still got to come yeah. back to the body yeah. and not Yeah, be it'd be hard to have a group of humans and not have <laughs> exactly. people Just be follow us yeah. around will hurt your feelings, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, be unhurtable, be unoffendable. Yeah. yeah. Do your best to yeah. not make it to about work you. Work it out. Yeah. yeah. Offense and hurt feelings come from it being about me. Yeah. I want you to you to uh, justify me. Yeah. I want you to make me to to it's good. you know make me relevant. Right, and that's what we we're talking about last week with the if you've given yourself as a holy and living sacrifice, that it stops being about you because your life be is about on, Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about mm-hmm. others. It's you know, and that's that's really good. So before we close this episode, I, I just wanted to take another moment um, to talk about our school of transformation. We have got a great a, idea. Another semester coming up mm-hmm. in a, just over a month or so. Yes. Um, so would you guys just like to invite? Oh yeah. Do you want to go ahead and do it? Let's. Oh, I, he's looking at me does, like he didn't understand. We're gonna invite. We're gonna invite the world. Everybody out there that's listening, we're inviting to to our school of transformation light, which is a light version of our full-time school that runs for six months but the school of light tra- school of transformation light is an eight week module that you can do from all over the world mm-hmm. you can do it online you can do it in person um and it starts september in september and we have people already signed up and from all over the world and it's not really a bible bible school it's more about jesus in your heart yeah and get it, and heal in some places where we've been wounded, like we're talking yeah. about. Um, we encourage you to come by um, to go to changeorville.org. Yeah, right? or transformationschool.org. Yeah, and yep. and look at it. It's um, it, it, I think it'll ch- everybody does it. Just it changes their life. And yep. if you and if you do have the time, we also have the full time school too. People come from all over the world, don't they? Change your life. Come yeah. here. It'll be, it'll be it's hard to leave once you're here because it's such a a good life. A good. Yeah. A good building, a challenge, going to yeah. change your life. You're going to be challenged in all these things here. Yeah. Again, not a Bible school, but the, the permanent um, full-time school of transformation does a lot about your heart issues and your pain of your past. Understanding of who God is understanding, and what he expects mm-hmm. from you. Yeah. And who Jesus is and who that makes you. Yeah, That's right. So if anyone's sitting on the fence, yes. they've, they've been thinking about it. What 18 would, to 95 years what, old. What would you say to them if they were on the fence? Do it. Just do it. It'll be the best six months of your life. Yep. And, uh, you know, we could have housing for you. We have in the past. Um, it's um, if you're while you're here, you'll be you'll be part of this um, Lights of Hope, which is 25,000 people coming to the Father's house to hear about Jesus during Christmas. Let your life be a living sacrifice. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. We will catch you next time. Bye bye. Have a great week.